I'm going to bring up Dr. Craig Cole, um, who is uh, a remarkable individual, a myeloma physician, who's been very dedicated to uh, myeloma patients. So Craig, I'll get you to come on up and have a seat up here with me on the stage. So Craig, so Craig is known, as I mentioned, for being a, a remarkable myeloma physician, also to have a really disturbing number of bow ties that he does <laughs> on a regular basis. It, it's just a, he makes fun of my cufflinks, I make fun of his bow ties, it's part of the, the love that we feel, but, um, but outside of that, Craig, um, I, I really want to give you the mic here to share, because I know that you are so involved in the myeloma community and so much of what we've been discussing today. Uh, but maybe tell us just a little bit about your background or how you landed in the med school and how you end up becoming a myeloma doctor. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. So uh, thanks for inviting me. Um, I actually grew up uh, 5.4 miles from here. Um, uh, between six and seven mile and Livermore, and my mom was um, the principal of Pitcher Elementary School, which is eight miles from here. Um, and so, uh, but we went to the Church of God in Christ, um, and that's where my grandmother took me to church um, every Sunday. And she was the not only the most amazing grandmother, but the most amazing cook ever. Um, and after church, we'd have those little meringue pies that had the meringue that was this high. She could make a hundred of them in like 15 minutes. Bless her heart. But, um, Sorry that we didn't get lemon meringues for today. Apparently, uh, had I known that, maybe, Craig, you could have made them for us. Uh, I tried. I can't, I can't compete. But, um, you know, I, when I went to college, uh, oh, before, when I was in high school, my dad had died of colon cancer. Um, and so when, and then soon after that, my grandfather died of prostate cancer. And my grandmother, um, who, my, grand, my grandparents were from the South, and the, you know, the Southern matriarch, you know, um, 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 uh, set up of our families that my grandmother took care of my dad, when he died of colon cancer, took care of my grandfather when he was dying of prostate cancer. Um, and, um, and, the, and literally, I clearly remember this, the day that we buried my grandfather, my grandmother said, oh, by the way, I have colon cancer, and I haven't done anything about it because I'm taking care of your dad and your grandfather, and um, so now I'm going to take care of myself. Um, and so I went off to college, and I thought everything was okay. And I was um, a biology and astronomy major, and my idea was that I was going to be an exobiologist. I was going to, you know, the space shuttle was flying, they were building a space station. And I'm like, I'm going to be up there in a the space station. Um, my grandmother said, no, you'll be unemployed. Say, <laughs> uh, what's going to happen? Um, and so I was doing my studies at Michigan State, and I and I would call her like maybe three times a week, and we would talk. And she really never told me what was going on with her colon cancer. And um, and then one, I think in my sophomore year, she called me and said, you know, can you take me to one of my doctor's appointments? I want um, I want to, I want you to meet my doctor. And so, um, so I skipped class and I drove down. And when I got, I hadn't seen her in about three months. Um, and when I got there, she was in bed and, uh, and in a lot of pain. And it took us a half hour to get her down the stairs. She was in so much pain. And just me driving to Sinai Hospital, um, every bump in the road, I could hear her cry out in pain. And I was like, you know, what is going on here? And then we got to uh, her oncologist clinic, and I unpacked her, put her in a wheelchair. We went up to 
see her oncologist, um, and her the receptionist was the doctor's mother, and she said, do you want to be seen on time, or do you want to be seen uh, when she's ready? And my mother, my grandmother took out a $20 bill and said, on time. And I was like, what's that? She said, if you want to be seen on time, you got to pay $20. So I was upset about that. Um, and then we got into the room, and then her doctor just barges through the door, doesn't knock, says, Vesta, your, colon, your cancer is worse. You're going to start new chemotherapy on Monday. And then literally was walking out the door. And my grandmother said, wait, um, I don't want to get any more chemotherapy. Um, I, I want to go on hospice and just be kind of comfortable. And her doctor then turned around and said, what are you talking about? And then called her every name in the book about how stupid she was and this and that and that. And I was literally in shock. I just could not believe this was happening. And, um, and she just kept on insulting her and said, I'm not going to be part of this. And then she just stormed out. And my grandmother turned and smiled to me. She said, you can take me home now. And so I, um, so I you know, we went down and took her, to, I got the car, pulled it up. And then as I was like getting her from the wheelchair and into the, the passenger seat, she grabbed my arm and she said, Craig, I think you can do a better job than that lady being a cancer doctor. And I, um, and then, you know, my life just, you know, all, all the anger that I had kind of was redirected into this is what I want to do now. And, and I think sort of the, you know, the funny thing is that I've written that story down, I've told that story, and it's still very emotional to me, because I just will never forget the, the, when she looked me in the eye and told me that. And I look back and just am, I am, I've always just loved and was always impressed by her strength, but the fact that she was empowered enough to really say, that I, this is what I want to do. This is, you cannot tell me what you're dictating to me, that I should just get more chemotherapy. And really it makes my life mission for patient empowerment. I mean, I think that I would be a terrible disservice to my grandmother if I didn't go to meetings like this and didn't talk to my patients about empowerment when my patients say, well, I'll do whatever you say, doc, I say, wait a minute. That's a failure on my part that I have not empowered you enough for us to make a decision together. And so that really from really out of the gate, when I went back and told my astronomy professor, I don't think I'm going into space, um, and decided to become a pre-med uh, major, uh, that everything kind of changed for me. Whoa. You can see why I said I'm just going to give Craig the mic, right? I mean, NASA's loss is our gain. Um, uh, and, and I mean that genuinely, Craig. I mean, I've always loved to, looked up to you. I've heard that story many times, and I get choked up every time he tells it. Um, you know, to have that kind of drive and passion. Um, and, and for those of you who know Craig Cole, I, I want to hear just have a love fest for you, brother. But um, I mean, he's a real deal, right? I mean, this is how he uh, works and practices in clinic. Um, and, and Craig, I, I wanted you, from your perspective, you know, you have such an, a, a, a special perspective from your own personal background, but also, you know, in the work that you've done, both in the academic world and you, you lead clinical trials and do things with CAR T and by specifics, all these fancy schmancy therapies that, that Dr. Zahner shared with us earlier, but you've always had such a passion for patient education in these, in these patient events. Um, you know, just tell us a little bit more about you know, the, the major lessons that you've learned and how, what you would want to share with this patient crowd here today, because I mean, what you shared already is, is just stunning. 
uh, but I know that there's more, more in the tank there that, that you've learned so much over having done even workshops like this and even engaged you before in so many workshops. But I just want to give you an opportunity to share some of those, those, those key things that you would want this uh, amazing crowd here today to take home. You know, I, um, the one thing that, that I have, that I even call my own patients, um, is question your doctor, ask your doctor questions. And so the hierarchy that used to exist in medicine, uh, the hierarchy that the doctor was here and then the information flowed you know, down, no longer exists. Uh, just like uh, Joe had mentioned, you know, when we educate doctors these days, we tell them that is not the way you're going to practice medicine. How you're going to practice medicine is that you uplift patients that you uplift these are patients are people that you work with and these are and patients are your partners in a journey not someone who you tell this is what you're going to do that every decision that you make has to be verified and validated by your physician and also when I say validation is that in today's world in today's world we doctors are under time constraints. They are under, I would say, artificial time constraints. That they need to get into the office, see a person, and get out because some um, person who's never been sick, that's a hospital administrator, is saying this is what you need to do at the end of the day. I would say you challenge your physician to slow down yeah. and say, wait a minute, I don't understand what you just said. Explain to me a bit more about what you said. Your doctor may squirm, may wiggle a bit, but you have to slow them down. I do that to my doctor. My doctor's like, oh, okay, I'm like, wait, 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 wait. What blood work are you gonna check on me again? Um, to slow them down and empower yourself. Empower yourself. Being here today is such an important thing because it delivers information that makes you more empowered. So when you see your doctor and you say, I have diabetes and I have you know, renal and my kidneys don't work well, you can ask your doctor, say, did you check me for myeloma? And if your doctor says, well, then you say, fire. And then you move on to somebody who does. Because every, every single discussion you have with your physician should be listened to and then validated. And if they're not here, and that is a problem especially African Americans have had in this country in their relationship with their doctors, is that they're not listened to and they're not validated. And so this is, you know, can, are we teaching new physicians how to validate and listen? Yes. Are there physicians out there that don't do that? Yes. Then it is then on you to make sure that that happens for you that you are heard every time, you're validated every time, and that you understand what's going on. And if your doctor has any discomfort for that, then it's the wrong doctor for you. So well said, Craig, thank you so much for this. You know, I, I knew that um, placing you here right at this time is gonna be ideal for us to listen and learn. You know, I've shared with you before that on, and many of you probably heard me say this too, on the day I got accepted to medical school, my father, who was um, a urologist, um, uh, he unfortunately passed away from colon cancer also, he said, I, I'm going to give you two pieces of advice, Joe. He said, number one, treat nurses like the professionals they are. Now, he was like 30 years ago. It was, wasn't really the common way of thinking, and I saw him live that. And number two, he said, God made you with two ears and one mouth for a reason. He said, listen to your patients. Now, I always joke and say, he was a urologist. Like, I don't know how much listening they do when they're down there, but he was clearly, you know, a, a good listener. You know, he was a, when he retired, the nurses got him a t-shirt that said the hospital plumbing department, right? He was a, a human plumber. But, uh, but that message is one I think that has really pervaded so much of the day so far today, that you are an equal participant in your healthcare. You are not just there to listen. You know, the days of here, dear, take this pill, trust me, I'm your doctor, you know, those, those days have gone. 
And I think this is actually a great segue to our next talk um, and our last sort of formal talk of the day, and then we're going to have um, a, an opportunity for some Q&A later, and we'll engage uh, Craig in that Q&A as well. And I'm going to ask uh, Donna Catamaro to come up. Donna is a nurse practitioner, as I mentioned, uh, up in New York City and on Sinai, and also has done a lot of work with us at um, the uh, Nurse Leadership Board um, and has really um, been a tremendous advocate for this whole principle of communication. So Donna, please make your way up here while, while, we're, while we're getting ready. And Donna is going to uh, share with us the importance of that communication uh, with both your primary care and indeed with um, uh, um, those of you who are interacting with your oncologist. Uh, thanks, Craig. Um, how can I forget this? This is like one of the most exciting things we're doing. You remember how I mentioned earlier that um, as we engage the community with Empower, we try to partner with anybody and everybody? You might recognize who this person is that we have engaged with. If you um, have any history of listening to certain kinds of music or watching a certain legal shows on television. Um, so I'm just gonna, we're just going to show a very brief clip, one of the several public service announcements that this individual is doing with us. And then, uh, sorry, Donna, we'll bring it up right after. So uh, let the camera roll. Thank you. Hey, it's Ice T. And I'm here to set the record straight about multiple myeloma. It's not melanoma. We're talking about blood cancer, not skin cancer. What if I were to tell you that myeloma is the most common blood cancer in African Americans? It hits our community hard. It's time we come together, educate ourselves, and fight for our community. Know the signs, know the symptoms. Regular blood tests don't detect it. Talk to your doctor. Learn more about myeloma at myeloma.org. 